All right, before you watch this video, which I just finished shooting, small message I want to give you. These 11 examples that I give you are actual real people, huh? real people. Some would be even more shocking than the others, but I cannot share their identity. Some of you even ask something illegal. So you tell me out of the 11, if you watch the whole video, which one according to you stands out? Comment down below and I'll be reading it. All right, now watch the video. Yeah, yeah, I know what you're thinking. You can get a job in the Middle East simply by trying or by magic through others or by a fluke. Remember that competition is everywhere. Some here, some there, but bam, Loy Macedo is the best. All right, in this video, I'm going to share with you what I do not do or what I refuse to do, uh, even if you pay me money or no matter how much money you're ready to pay me. Uh, some of them will shock you and uh, believe it or not, the examples that I cite are actually real incidents that took place. Okay, for those of you new to my channel, my name is Loy Macedo. I am a personal branding consultant coach. You could say uh, my core specialization, helping people get well-paying jobs in the Middle East, especially UAE, Dubai. That's why this list has been compiled. And I'm also, you know, people book my services for coaching personal or professional problems and challenges that they cannot share with anyone. Okay, now, Given that, you know, if you pay attention, the last sentence which I told you that people cannot share with anyone, people have this tendency to share their deepest, darkest, most despicable secrets. And uh, for me, I'm used to it. They tell me stuff that they cannot tell anyone. So sometimes this stuff is illegal. Okay. However, what I've done is I've compiled the good, bad, ugly, and the generic stuff. So in no particular order. The first thing which I do not do, if you pay me money, no matter how much money you pay me, is offer guaranteed jobs. I don't know from where, uh, I've never stated in any video, I've never told anyone, give me money and I'll give you a job, or give me X amount of money. Now, it's not that people don't take money and give you jobs. There have been cases in multinational companies. There have been cases in known brands. See, one of the benefits of uh, making a video outside. Okay. Loud noise. Okay, anyway. So what I was saying was, uh, there are people who have taken bribes. There are people who have explicitly said, you'll have to give me your next three months salary, six months salary. Okay, and it's very common in places like India and third world countries. Uh, not so much in the Middle East, but it does happen and I'm aware of it. However, me, me and my contacts, the people who I have kept in touch with over the years, none of them, not a single person will take money and guarantee you a job. Uh, and if, you know, I tell people, see, listen, if someone is telling you that, give me money, I'll give you a job. Chances are it is most probably a scam, a fraud, or uh, it is uh, something fishy going on. But the only exception to this rule is if a owner of a company, a business owner says, I'll give you a job but you have to bear the expenses of the ticket, the visa and uh, the first month's salary because I don't know you, I'll give you a job. If you can prove yourself, fine. So that's a risk you have to take. So I'm very aware that, and this happens, huh? this is right now, even right now it's happening in UAE. 
uh, and the Middle East. People have to pay for their ticket, people have to pay for the visa expenses, people have to pay for general this thing and uh, the salary normally is not given the first month or they might give you a partial salary. And the reason for this is, so the candidate that they are getting has skin in the game. Others, if you get a freeloader who gets a visa easy, ticket easy, whatever he wants easily, then uh, the person can just turn around and say, no, I'm not interested in the job after working one week or 15 days or a month. And there are many cases, many employers, they don't want such employees. Uh, and I, my business contacts have also done this and I totally empathize with them. That is 100%. I totally support them when they say that, uh, yeah, I take money from people for their ticket or visa money. Because then you will, you will also have skin in the game and you'll make things work. But people exploit this where laborers are there or let's say construction company, agents take money, employers take money, that is unethical. Okay, so there's a difference between both. I hope you understood that. So that's one. I don't take money and give guaranteed jobs. The second one, second thing which I do not do is, I do not take money and give you a guaranteed interview. Yesterday itself, I got this guy, um, long, very long beard, um, has a Muslim cap, Indian guy, he looks like one of those preachers. So he told me, brother, assalamu alaikum, and may the peace of Allah be with you, and this and that, all these pleasantries. And then he told me, brother, uh, I want to take your service, okay. And uh, so I asked him, send me your resume and all that, oh, fine. So I said, what exactly do you need? So he told me, look, I'm not one of those people who will say, I pay you money and you give me a guaranteed job. I don't want that. All I want from you, the, so I asked him, what guarantee do you need then? Saying the guarantee that I need is, can you get me a guaranteed interview? Just give me the chance to go for an interview. I promise you, I will convince the guy to take me. He will thank you for introducing me to him. He was a genuine guy, nice guy. But I let him know that, see, listen, I don't take money and guarantee interviews. So, and he asked me, why, sir, you can just give me just a chance. I said, my dear, think, for example, you have a big contact. Okay, think, for example, you have a very big contact. Somebody comes to you and says, please introduce me to him for an interview. Okay. One time you might do it. Fine. Two times? Yeah, I might do it. Three times? Yeah, I might do it. But then would you do it ten times? That every person comes to you, you will keep introducing to this high profile contact. Twenty times? Thirty times? At some point your contact will say, what the hell are you doing man? I'm not sitting here doing nothing. I have work to do. Stop disturbing me. Stop giving my contact details to others. Stop uh, telling other people to contact me. Stop requesting me for interviews. Isn't that common sense? Like, for example, you're working, right? If I ask you to give one hour of your time for somebody who I know, you'll say, once you'll say, okay. If I ask you two times, you might say, okay. But if I ask you every single time, three times, four times, five times, at some point you'll say, see, listen, man, I'm busy. You're taking advantage of the friendship we have. Imagine I've been doing this for nearly like 16 to 20 years, how many people must have requested me? And if I keep troubling my clients or my contacts and tell them, meet this guy, meet that guy, meet that guy, they'll go mad. And in fact, the biggest question, which you are not using your common sense, I don't know you. I know my contact, I know myself. I don't know you. You can portray yourself to be a nice guy. You can portray yourself to be an expert. You can bluff on your CV, you can bullshit on your CV, you can be a fraud, you can be a scammer. How the hell do I know, man? Just because you said hello to me on uh, social media, sir, big fan of yours, 
finished, I have to put my guard down and introduce you. How many scammers, fraudsters, how many people lie on their CV? How many people portray that they are larger than life? In fact, here's a simple question. Have you met anybody in, in your life who writes the truth on his CV? I'm lazy, I'm average, I don't do my work, I report to work late, I gossip. Not a single person, everyone portrays that they are perfect. So the second thing which I do not do is, I do not give uh, uh, guaranteed interviews. Number three, oh, this one is a big one. <laughs> then uh, people, some of them, they actually have booked my service and, uh, and I've ended up giving their money back, cancelling. Why? They're asking me for illegal stuff. Like, what do you mean by illegal stuff? How can I take a loan from the bank and run away? Seriously, huh? This is an explicit question. They have paid me. I want to take 100,000, half a million from the bank. And uh, please give me step by step how I can take the loan, get out of the country, and I'll pay you commission also for it. People have told me this. I've got uh, people who have asked me how to fake it till you make it. I'm like, uh, what are you doing, man? This is not right. See, the reason why I don't want to get into this nonsense is because it is a criminal offense. And remember, when you're talking to someone, it can be recorded as well as it can be documented in terms of text or email. Now, it's not because of that fear that I don't do this. I generally don't like it. That is why anybody who takes a loan and runs away and then says, oh, how can I come back without being, um, you know, without anyone knowing. I refuse to help such people. I don't have respect for such individuals. So please don't ask me to do something illegal. I don't want that. Then uh, number four is, uh, <laughs> can you give me your contact? Your contacts, they are details. Why should I give you my contacts and their details? No, no, I want to, uh, lawyer, I'm not going to take advantage. Or people say, okay, I challenge you. Give me five contacts who are CEOs. Give me their names. And uh, why should I tell you? Why should I give someone else's name to you? It's like me asking you, can you give me the name of your employer, his uh, private phone number, and uh, personal details about him? Do you think you're going to betray your boss or without his permission, give him all the details? Tell me, would you do that to your spouse? Would you do that to your friends? Leak their data online, it's called doxing. Would you do that? Would not do that and nobody would appreciate it. So if you wouldn't do that, why should I, man? And like I told you, these are people I have a relationship for so many years. I don't know who the hell are you. Why should I do it to prove what? Hmm. Number five is, uh, yeah, teach me how to bypass the system. See, being, having a client and telling them the loopholes of the system versus teaching them how to bypass. Okay, sounds the same, right? Like for example, I tell them on the CV, don't mention this particular thing. Okay, this will work against you. So that is a one-off thing. But if you are going to tell me, if you're going to pay me money and expect me, see Emirates Airlines, no? They have a particular format. Uh, give me, leak those questions to me or send me those questions. Prepare me so that I can get. You know, number one is the person who trusted me with that information. Do you think they would appreciate I leaking it out to you? Breach of trust, right? Or let's say one of my friends runs a business and uh, there are standardized tests and standardized questions that they'll ask. Just imagine me leaking this information to others. By the way, coconuts are falling there because they have monkeys who are bringing it down. So that's very dangerous for me to go there. See, my contact will not appreciate. Why? Because he is asking those questions to filter a right candidate. And you want me to betray the person who I know? 
man, my relationship with him is much more than what you have paid me. So that's another bullshit that I don't understand. Number six, hmm. this one is irritating to the core. People ask me questions which they can either Google search or are so stupid that you begin to wonder, are you talking to a person, a joker or someone who is mentally gone case? Like for example, these are actual questions. How do I go to Dubai? What do you mean, how do you go to Dubai? No, how, how can I go there? Then how to get a job? Where do I apply? How to apply? Uh, some of them have even asked me, uh, can you teach me how to write a cover letter? Can you teach me how to write a CV? <laughs> See, I, I understand I offer resume rebranding service. I'm not uh, offering uh, kindergarten services like, please, can you write this letter for me? Like one of the guys, he's not my client, he got offered a... Um, there was a job opening, they asked him, please let me know what is your salary and how much are you expecting? He's not my client. Huh? Send me a mail. Can you help me write this letter? Write this letter for what? No, please help me. You want my service to write this letter? Uh, yes, sir. This is my charge. Sir, it's so expensive, sir. Okay, what do you think is the right? Sir, I can Google and get this. In Google, nah. Sir, can you do it for actual, huh? Can you do it for like two dollars, one dollar? <laughs> Go to Fiverr, man. Why do you think websites like that are there? So, you know, asking stupid, childish, silly questions. Like another one, this one I remember. Uh, I want to get a job, but my girlfriend uh, told me she'll break up with me if I go get a job. What do you want me to do? <laughs> Tell you what to choose, girlfriend or uh, a job? Uh, common sense. Then number seven. This one pisses me off. I get people who call me, uh, I please, can you convince my husband? Can you convince my wife? Can you tell my son or daughter to be serious in life? Or this resume is for my husband. This resume is for my wife. This resume is for my girlfriend. See, I don't mind uh, if you pay me money and say, give the resume rebrand of this, fine. But it's not copy paste. There are so many variables, there are so many questions I have to ask. And if I tell them like, I need to ask these questions. No, 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 no. You don't talk to my wife. I will talk to my wife. You tell me what question. You're so possessive of your wife. Sometimes I think like, maybe I look so handsome that they are afraid the wife might leave them. I know you must be laughing thinking, <laughs> you're an handsome. Yeah, why is he so fucking insecure? But I don't mind that part, resume rebrand, but calling me and telling me to convince your spouse and your child or your girlfriend, convince them to take life seriously. Yeah. See, the problem is, you might say, Lloyd, just take the money and convince them. Have you tried talking to a college student when they didn't want to listen to you, when they were not interested in you, when they didn't take you seriously? Like, for example, let's say a boy is in love with a girl or a girl is in love with a boy. Okay? School days, puppy love. And you are a total outsider and you come to them and tell them, see, listen, uh, this is not real. Grow up, be serious. Do you seriously think that kid or that college student will take you seriously? In fact, forget that. Try offering your unsolicited advice, even if no matter how decent and how nice to someone who doesn't know you, who doesn't, who's not interested in you. Do you think they would be interested? Common sense, right? Then, uh, hmm, number eight, another one that irritates me. Uh, please, can you share your templates? What templates? No, no, I want to see your templates. See, number one is I customize profiles. 
There's no one size fits all. And number two is if I did have a template, why the hell should I share it with you, man? So that you copy and uh, share it with everyone. What do you do when you go online and you get a template? You download it, you copy it and you share with your friends or you copy it for free. Then I get guys who are like a smart ass. Okay, lawyer, just show me your work. Okay, show me your work. Uh, I'm a warehouse supervisor, for example. Show me 10 warehouse supervisor resumes, which you have done. Why the fuck should I share that? Why? So that you can copy and uh, then tell me to bugger off. And in fact, uh, the previous point I forgot to mention, they say introduce my contacts. Some people are like, Lo, I am a warehouse supervisor, example. Give me the names and numbers of 10 warehouse supervisors who you help get a job. I'll talk to them and see if you're good. If you need that kind of validation, then don't come to me now. You have come to me because you see my YouTube videos. I already offer free content. What more do you want? If you're still not convinced, don't come. Then uh, number nine, barter exchange. Boy, if you make my CV, if you get me a job, if you guarantee me a good salary, I will make you famous. I will make sure everybody knows about you. I'll make sure you earn hundreds of thousands of dollars. Boss, I've been making money without you and I'll continue making until the day I can't. If you are so great, why didn't you make money for yourself? They make it sound as if, uh, you know, they are some big shot and all that. Loy, Loy, listen, forget the money. I'll make you famous. I'm already famous, bitch. <laughs> Number 10. This one is, first is asking, then starts uh, pleading, then starts irritating, and then starts begging. And some of them straight away, without me even knowing them, I don't know who the hell they are, I don't know what they are. They'll put their long sob story. Loy, let me tell you my story. And these stories that they share with me, when I copy paste this on a Word document, some of them are five pages long. Let that sink in. Three pages is minimum. Okay, if it is one page, skim through. But then, see, whether it's one page, three page, five page or ten page. Who the, who, who the fuck cares about your problem, man? Oh, I'm suffering. I have no food to eat. I have no money. I have no this. I have no that. Lo, I made some bad decisions in life. I trusted a girl and she took all my money. I spent money on booze. I gambled. So you enjoyed your fucking life. And now, when you are made to pay the price, you don't want to pay the price. So I have to pay the price and do things for, for free for you. In fact, I even get guys, like once I was earning $10,000, $20,000, big salary. But today I need your help, lawyer. I'm bankrupt. So when you want big money, you never help me. Now when you're suffering, I should help you. Are you fucking stupid? Oh, people, no? And then the last one, which is a piggyback of this point. People, when they're going through a tough time, what they do is they try this nice little game. Loy, just like you, when you were suffering, when you had nobody, angels helped you. They give you free food. They give you free money. They give you, uh, you know, help with your jobs. Today, I'm coming to you for maybe not money. I want free service, free help, free assistance. Why? Oh, because Loy, when you needed, you cried. That time, anyone could have said, why should I help you? But people helped you, right? Now you have to help me. Who the fuck are you, man? If someone helped me, and they come back to me and say, Loy, help me, I'll help them. You are a nothing and nobody. You have never helped me. I don't even know who the fuck you are. You have come to know my life story through my videos. And now you're ex expecting me to give you VIP treatment or to give you the same perks and benefits, which I literally suffered and begged. So what I tell them is, uh, FYI, 
I was begging like a dog. I was begging. Can you beg? Beg and show me. Come on. Beg, 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 beg. So when I start doing that, they don't like. And then I tell them, I gave my passport details. I gave the passwords, everything I was ready to give to get help. Plus a written letter. So give me a passport copy, give me a letter, give me all the details so that I can keep a copy with me. Very rarely does someone give. And the ones who give are normally like roadside people who you can't do anything. By the way, you'll be shocked to know, labor class guy will not, who will not even get $500 per month, send me his passport copy, wife's copy, full family, his history, everything. He wanted a, like 100,000, like big amount. Sir, you can keep my passport copy with you, with my house location, my this, my that. Sir, if I don't pay you back, you can make fun of me, expose me online, destroy my reputation. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. I look that stupid, no? You are anyway a roadside fellow. Nobody gives a damn. You want me to give you hundreds of thousands of dollars or whatever? And people will laugh at me, man. See, overall, what I want to tell you is, before you contact someone for a service, or you get in touch with a total stranger, please uh, use a little bit of common sense. Yeah. I deal with all kinds of people and majority of them I refuse, majority. Because you not only have freeloaders, you get people with no common sense, you people who are idiots, you get people who, no, no, I'm not going to bargain with you. I'm not going to bargain with you. I want to maintain. I know Indians are cheap and all that. But what is the best you can do for me? <laughs> you just said you don't believe in bargaining and now you're bargaining. And then some are, Loy, I'm not a cheap freeloader. I don't want anything. But help me get a job, I'll pay you a salary after I get a job. After, and some even more ridiculous. After six months, I'll help, I'll give you back. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure, sure. You get a job, you're confirmed with a new company. And then, Loy, thank you for this job here, take the money. Have you any time given someone a big sum of money and told them, take it, pay me back when you want? They paid you back. I know you might think I look like an idiot. Sadly, I'm not. I might look. That's all. Only look. You look smart, but you're not smart. That's my response to such people. Anyway, this is what I wanted to share with you. You let me know your thoughts. Out of these, all these, 11 that I shared with you, which one you feel is the most ridiculous of the lot. Okay? Good, bad, ugly. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. This is me signing off. You guys take care.